joining me now, CIO of the Bonson Group, David Bonson. He's also the author of the upcoming book, Elizabeth Warren, How Her Presidency Would Destroy the Middle Class and the American Dream. Tell us how you feel, David. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, you know, this morning, every morning I wake up and it, it doesn't matter what periodical I'm reading. There's, got, there's something in there that says that the, the Main Street, forget about the, the crazy socialists, but on Main Street, there is a greater and greater sense, a greater and greater feeling that things aren't fair. And I think the irony, of course, is that the higher the market goes, uh, the more you tout the trillions of dollars being created, it backfires on those who say, well, I'm not participating. I think that the problem we have is that global growth got off trend line at the financial crisis and has not come back. So inequality becomes a bigger deal to those that feel left out when their quality of life is not going higher. The delta between the two never matters as much when everybody's doing better. But when the absolute standard of quality of life is not improving for a certain segment of society, it has always historically generated the sort of populist pushback. So you bring up the global economy. I mean, and I'm going to bring it back just domestically in a moment. But on that front, uh, just think in the last two or three weeks, you've had, uh, you know, big pushbacks and uprisings in Chile, Mm -hmm. uh, Lebanon, uh, Hong Kong, Spain. Uh, and, and, And for me, it's interesting because these aren't peasants, right? These are middle class folks who are saying to a degree, to have a luxury of saying, hey, we want even bigger part of the pie. We're doing okay. They're not saying they're not doing well, but they're saying that the gap between what they are doing and what the others are doing, the elites in those particular countries, that they think they should get even more. So it's not even just a U.S.-centric problem. No, the populism that's going on around the world is, is very, you're right, it's a total global phenomena. And in the U.S., it's actually the uh, exception to the rule that we're now kind of included in this, where there's a lot of populist angst in our country. I think a lot of that was the Trump phenomenon in 2016, is that historically there's been uprisings. You mentioned some of these are like third world countries. But uh, the U.S. has never been in a position where this many people have felt on the outside. I think the financial crisis was a big part of of it, you had a right-wing reaction to it and a left-wing reaction to it. At the end of the day, the biggest challenge that we have as a country is to have our economy working for all people. I do not agree that obsessing on the delta, the difference between those doing uh, at the upper end and those at the lower end is nearly as important as mobility. People want to be able to go from one group to another group higher. So uh, in in the white paper, that's sort of the uh, foundation for a lot of Elizabeth Warren's uh, policies a couple of things that stood out to me. There's a lot, but there are two I want to ask you about. One is the private savings rate. They do three periods. Um, they do 1917 and 1929, which was the, you know, the, the roaring 20s where we had the robber barons and, and the greatest wealth and in, income inequality. Then there was a period where they say unions came into being. And then there was 1986 to the present. The bottom 90 percent, their savings rate was 1 percent, 6 percent. But now it's 0 percent, while the top 1 percent have the luxury of saving 36 percent. I, do, what do you make of that, that, that sort of juxtaposition? It's completely unacceptable, but I think that we have to look at what's causing the problem. The problem is not because rich people are getting richer. The problem is because you have uh, price inflation over this period of time that does not affect people like us, Charles. It affects people that are going paycheck to paycheck. 2% increase in price of goods year over year is a big deal to right. those people. That's what has uh, uh, cannibalized the savings rate in our country is price inflation. And we treat it like it's a good thing. Like we want more inflation. Inflation, that is not good policy for those at a lower end of the wage income. I've got to let you go. We're going to be talking a whole lot more, though, before your book comes out. And uh, you're adamant that Warren, while she's presenting herself as a savior, would be the death knell for this economy. Absolutely, for the economy, but not just for wealthy people. The people who would suffer most from her policies are the middle class. David Bonson, thank you very much.